Oh, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of uh, Cardwell's Cauldron here, a production of Geektopia Island. Uh, I'm your host, William. And I'm your co-host, Kevin. And we're here, we're going to go back to standard for this week, and it's going to be called, this deck is called Classically Nope. Uh, I'm basically doing a blue-white control here without approach, because, you know, uh, you don't want a one-trick pony in control, right? Eh, maybe? I yeah, no, nobody no, does. No, no. This is more of a little balanced control deck with basically cards I want to use. Like, that, like that, that will haven't seen play and probably will never see play, but I want to use them because I think they're actually pretty hot. Well, let's get right into it. Yes, sir. Let's delve right into this guy. First guy that starts off the deck is a thematic compass. This is literally why I built the deck, because I want to prove people that this deck, this card is amazing. What does it do? So basically, you play it for two drop uh, artifact. Third turn, uh, you pay three, tap it, and you go get a basic land on the deck and put it in your hand. And of course, people are like, well, about Search of Escanta. Well, that's not in this deck. This is. Because by turn three, you're playing blue. They're going to be like, hey, mother, may I? And you're going to be like, either nope or thanks. Uh, I scared you into submission. I got a land. Thank you. And then, of course, when you... I do believe it's uh, seven yeah, lands. Yeah, seven lands. It flips into what's uh, Maze of Ith, correct? Yep. So basically, you can tap it to add a mana or tap it and remove... Untap a dude, remove it from combat. Attacking creature. I like it. So, like, even if you hit turn seven, you... Play this, go get another land, it flips. Hey, you got another one, you know. So multiples do not matter. I all I actually want to run four in here, but you know, I got one in sideboard just to test it out, pretty much. But excellent card. I like the compass. I always have you you told me about it and yeah. I I looked at it a couple times, I was like, I don't know, but it it, it sold on me pretty quick. Yeah, because it's either hey, you wanna play your your turn two, turn three, or get a counter, or am I gonna get a land? Like yeah. there's no no negatives to it at all. All uh, right. Well, I guess the next dude we got is a nimble obstructionist. Uh, he's just a cute little three-one flyer flash. Um, pay three. Uh, you can either stop it to do a, I do believe a active or triggered ability that you don't control. So you can stop that. A lot of, you know, sack. They're sacking their lands or scarab gods or whatever. You can sack it. Or even if you don't want to go get a land, you just throw him out and you have a 3-1 attacker like, like real quick. Yeah, he seems really hot for uh, for a little stand for a control because you can cycle and draw a card and get to, you do a special ability when you cycle. I mean, what's not like what's not to like about it? Exactly. Next is uh, Big Daddy Construct, Torrential Gear Hulk. Yep. I mean, he, he speaks for himself. Like, let's get yeah, real. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, people kind of stopped playing him because of a braid, but now a braid's like disappearing in the main deck. He's just a good guy. Like, he's just a good little big daddy gear hulk yeah. that gets your spells again. Yeah, I like him. Yep. Glyph Keeper. What is this guy for? Now, this is also, like, kind of how a blue-white controller... You know, gear hulk use, is, used to be the creature, like, pull mm -hmm. up him down, swing, five damage, whatever. But for one left, one less Glyph Keeper, he's a 5-3 flyer. Whenever he gets a, targeted by ability or spell the first turn, uh, counter it. So you have a 5-3 flyer that basically protects itself. And, uh, you know, it's a four-turn clock. You know? I like it. And you plop them down. Hopefully they're trying to gonna, they're going to try to kill it twice on their turn, which is fine because they're wasting two spells on their turn. That or you're just swinging for five. And, I just mean, he's got Embalm, so if he does die, you can just bring him back later. Exactly. I like it. Exactly. I, he's, he's pretty good game into really. Yeah, he really is. Uh, speaking of game engines, we get into the trials, man. I'm surprised this guy has not jumped ahead when the set rotated. It was like, hey, here's another Gideon. Yeah. Man, you will not believe his plus one actually su extremely helps at the beginning. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because uh, uh, plus one, till your next turn, prevail on damage target permanent would control. So, like, plop him down early game, that dude can't hit Gideon. He gets bigger. It kind of reminds me of old type Gideons. Dude, old Gideon was good. Yeah, yeah. Where you just prevented damage and dudes block him. It was just ridiculous. So, yeah, and zero, you can just swing with him. Mm -hmm. Once you get stable, the board stable and everything. And of course, the other zero, which actually comes into play more than you think, is uh, it gets an emblem and you can't lose the game. And when that 
happens late game, they're splitting their dudes between trying to hit you and Gideon at the same time trying to kill you, and it's it goes horribly awry for them. I like most it. of the time. So this other guy I haven't seen in a I haven't seen him in a minute, but Dovin yeah. Bond. He's I wanna use him. Like his ultimate seems powerful enough, like if you get there then you just win the game after mm -hmm. that. But his plus one, uh, dude gets minus three, minus zero, and can't activate it abilities. So that's super good against Hazard, you know, make him smaller. Or any creatures that, you know, you just say, hey, no, you can't attack because you're a little weakling, dude. Or if you need to draw cards, gain life, minus one, you draw two, uh, draw a card and gain two life. I like it. And then his ultimate that I was talking about, you get emblem, your opponents can't untap more than two permanents during the untap step. I've been hit with that before, and it's it's game breaking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the fact that you're <clears throat> going to be countering or board wiping their stuff, and they can only untap two mana a turn. Super. I good. mean, you can fight through it. It's just it's going to be rough. <laughs> exactly. Especially with you having the control for it. And with that, we got we got some of the good control here, like settle the wreckage. I've I've seen this card everywhere, man. Yeah, it's just extremely good, especially with Scarab God and out there just and the Hazard and all the indestructible dudes. Or the gods that keep coming back. You're just like, no. get him. Or even against Team Ray Energy, they have big dudes, Hexproof dudes. You're just like, no, get out of here. It, it exiles all attacking creatures, and they go get lands for them. Yeah. I mean, cool. Late game, you already have your lands. I don't care if you it, go get more. Exactly. And if, yeah. and if you have Dome Bond at the time, they can't. Uh, you know, it's just super cute. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Next up is Pool from Tomorrow. Hey, remember, uh, was the Sphinx's Revelation? Yeah. It's kind of like that, but worse. But still, it's standard, and <laughs> it still draws you cards. Like that's fair. Oh. It is definitely worse than Sphinx's in a way because you don't gain life and you have to discard a card. But I mean, it's still good. It's still instant speed, and that's what matters. And with Thematic Compass getting you lands, hopefully, then you're literally not going to be missing a land drop ever. Yeah. So you're going to be able to have enough land to instant speed at the end of the turn and pull and draw cards. And I mean, yeah, any amount of instant draw spells pretty good, oh, regardless. Yeah. And I mean, we have to have the the, the obligatory counter spell. We yep. got disallow. That's good old classics right there. But even better because it gets activated abilities or triggered abilities as well. So yeah, so it's just counter some exactly. We're countering all the things exactly <laughs> every single thing. Uh, next up is Insidious Will. Now, I love this counter spell. A while back when I had my bank control kind of mm -hmm. flashed deck. And it's just cute fun. I mean, it's just another counter spell, but you may get to choose targets for a new target spell, or you get to copy it. So if they're like Glimpse of... Uh, the Glimpse card, you draw two, scry two, and then draw two, get two energy. You'd be like, you know what, I need to do that too. So you do that, and you, you can get to copy that spell. Or you get to just counter target spell too. So it's, you know, just some options pretty much. It's yeah. just a fun counter spell. Options, win. O options are great because oh. it gives you multiple things to do. Oh, yeah. And then we have Essence Scatter. Uh, we're running a 4 of because it's basically a creature meta at the moment. Even against other control, you still just want to have it. Counter target creature spell for two. Done. Yeah, all day. Yeah. Just, just your normal. No, don't, you don't have that. Exactly. Next up, last we got is Fumigate. Yep. Of course, uh, with control, they're they're gonna flood the board sooner or later. Just get rid of the dudes, gain one life for each dude, and you don't even mind if your dudes die because they're, you know, Cliff Keeper comes back if you want to, board wipe, swing with Gideon, just uh, simple things like that. I like it. Yeah, I like it. What do you have in the sideboard card roll that helps you out? Now with the sideboard, uh. We're going to throw in another thematic compass, because why not, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, four negates, because, yeah, because negate helps against other control decks. Uh, four solemnities. I might hit that down to three, but against team or energy. What does solemnity do? Uh, solemnity basically says players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. So, sure, they might get a long test cub, but then you're like, turn three, solemnity. Okay, cool. What are you going to do from now on? You know, I'll kill your Long Tusk Cub and just hopefully win the game from there. I like it. That, you're not gonna yeah, that's it. a pretty good... Uh, I can definitely see it dropping down to three, yeah, but yeah. it's still a good sideboard card for it. Because you want to get it, and, you know, after they see it, they're going to do Appetite for yeah. a natural, which destroys a target enchantment, so you want more just in case. Um, we got one more Settle the Wreckage because it's so good mm -hmm. in the thing. And then uh, four cast out. 
So it's an enchantment, cost four, flash. Uh, exile target non permanent uh, opponent control. So their god or their planeswalker or whatever. And it has cycling too, just in case you need to get that land or whatever else. Yeah, you if, you, if you don't have, if you don't need a use for it, you just draw a card. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then, of course, we're filling out another board white, Fumigate. Now, I might mix and match because I was just thinking about Siren Stormcaller. It's a one drop blue guy. Yeah, and you can hot. Pay, yeah, flying 1 1. And then you could pay one to make sure that counter target spell that targets you or, or permanent you control. Yeah, that dude's real hot. So I'm thinking about actually putting those in sideboard just in case you play against black and they're just like, let me look at your hand. You're like, no, sorry. Sack this dude. Don't look at my hand. I like it. Yeah, it was super Sounds good. like a pretty solid little sideboard right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, it could be mix and match because I was just kind of throwing, like, what's good blue, white cards, whatever. <laughs> Do that. Uh, for the lands, we kind of basically, there's only two duels. So, uh, Glacial Fortress, Irrigated Farmland, because of the cycle, you get to mm -hmm. draw cards that way. Uh, but two of the utility lands, Filled or Ruined. So, they sack a non basic, you sack that, you both could go get a basic. Fine for you. Especially if you already settle, settle the wreckage and they don't have any more basics. Then you're just getting rid of a land for free. And, uh, of course, uh, Scavenger Grounds, tap, exile, all all graveyards. Because you don't care about your graveyard. Yeah. So you just care about the enemies. Yeah. I mean, it, you'll lose a couple things, but it's whatever. Yeah, exactly. And then you're going to have enough basics, five planes, six islands, to cover for a compass. Because that's what you're going to be doing mostly with that with that guy. It's it's very simple control deck. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's uh, I'm like an old school thinking player. So this is what yeah. I think of a blue white control when I see this. I uh, it's what I would probably play. I, I enjoy decks like this because it's got it's bigger dudes at the end, yeah, and yeah. I mean that's where you're getting to. You get to the big dudes, and they they're gonna win you the game. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully you just tempo out. You know, turn two compass, turn three either counter or Gideon. And then from there, you're just golden. You're just holding back the cards you have, and then, you know, you're a reactionary deck for most control. It's pretty cute. It seems pretty solid for a pretty pretty standard, easy-to-build uh, control deck. Oh, yeah. I and mean, besides Gideon and maybe Disallow, it's not really that much either, because it's slightly budget. You can even remove Gideons for... Something else that you could, if you're on a budget. Or I mean, whatever. is isn't torrential still a thing? Is oh he... yeah, torrential gear Hulk. He's still a big thing. Yeah, and oh, it's like he's pretty sure he's still a thing. <laughs> yeah, which of course you know, torrential comes in. He can do settle, essence scatter, insidious will disallow like all the all the flavor. I mean, yeah, you're gonna get it. You have to pay a little bit to get him, but he's he's too good for this deck. Exactly. I mean, he's a big fatty to to beat with, and he's. He gets back all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. And if you narrow it down to them having one creature, compass, when it flips, just stops it every time. Mm hmm. It's like, nope, sorry. You're going to pass turn? Cool, thank you. And then you control the board from there. I definitely think it's something that you definitely want to look into. Yes. Well, with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, the list will be down below. And go ahead, give me some comments, see what you think. Of course, I know the sideboard needs a little bit of work. Like I said, Siren Stormcaller, probably definitely three or four of and up there. And uh, welcome to this. Uh, thank you for another episode of Cardinal's Cauldron. Thank you, Kevin, for joining me. Thank you. It was a good trip. All right. Hopefully you all enjoyed this day. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and keep up to date with our future content. And, and please join us on our social media and check us out on Twitch.